In this question, we're going to describe the role of sex chromosomes in the control of gender and inheritance of haemophilia. So there's two points that we need to talk about here. Um, the first point is the, what sex chromosomes are, and then we also need to talk about how it controls gender as well as the inheritance of um, haemophilia, an X-linked condition or sex-linked condition. So sex chromosomes, what are they? So sex chromosomes, what do they do? They determine gender determine gender. So, but there's two of them, there's X and Y, right? And then we get one of them each from our parents. Is one chromosome is inherited from each parent. So the way that you have to think about this is just that you have to talk about sex chromosomes first. So this is our first point here. And you just have to think about everything about them that is relevant. So we talked about what sex chromosomes are, um, that they're inherited from each parent, that they determine gender. Male, female. And then you need to talk about what is a male and what is a female. So XX is female. XY is male. And then what determines the gender? It's actually the sperm from the father, because the sperm from the father could be either X or Y. It could be either one of the dads. Whereas for a female from mum, because mum is XX, then either way, mum is going to give an X chromosome to the child. So gender is determined by sperm from father. Good. So right now we've talked about sex chromosomes as well as gender. And then the final thing that we need to talk about is inheritance of haemophilia. So this is really easy stuff. The inheritance of the haemophilia is a little bit more tricky, but you have to talk about um, how haemophilia is an example of a sex-linked gene. A sex-linked gene. So let's define a sex-linked gene first. Sex-linked gene is a gene on a sex chromosome. How easy is that? So that'll give, give us one point as well. Um, now you need to state that haemophilia is an example of a sex-linked gene. See how everything ties together? You kind of go from one point to another point to another point. In this case, we talked about, um, we talked about a sex-linked gene uh, because we were prompted by haemophilia. Then we say haemophilia is an example of a sex-linked gene. We talk about what a sex-linked gene is. Some people might even define what haemophilia is. So haemophilia is an example of a sex-linked gene. Good. So after that, then we can also talk about um, a, a couple of other things as well. So in regards to haemophilia, if you remember, um, it's a homo, it's a sex-linked recessive gene. So in this case, we can draw a Punnett grid, something like this. And what are our options? So you say if it was male, if it was male, then they could be either X, big H, which is normal, so they're not haemophilia, Y, or X, little h, Y. And then for females, they've got a few more options. So they can be either completely normal, like this, or they can be a carrier. Because remember, with recessive conditions, you need two copies of the affected um, gene. So two copies of X a little h to show up as a phenotype. So in order to be haemophilia, in order to be a haemophiliac. Okay, and then the final option is that if you're really unlucky and a female, then you've got two copies of the X little h, which means that you'll also be a haemophiliac. It means that you bleed easily. So what can we gather from this? First thing is that it's more likely it's more likely that um, a male is to be affected with a haemophilia. More likely that a male to be affected by haemophilia. 
And that's simply because that it has, uh, a male has a Y chromosome as well. So if he has a Y chromosome and he only needs one copy of um, X, B, X little h over here in order to be affected, whereas a female has to have two copies. So the chance of a female having two copies is much less than a male having one copy of X little h. Okay, so then how about females? So uh, uh, let's talk about an, uh, an affected female. An affected female will have um, genotype, so X little h, X little h. However, an affected female can also be a carrier, which is this point in red over here. So there could be a carrier as well. So a carrier female is X big H, X little h. And there's a few other things that you can talk about. You can talk about how, for example, um, if the son of the son of a carrier female will have a 50-50 chance of being um, affected. So let's say, so the son of a carrier female, so a carrier female would have one X big H and one X little h. She is not affected by haemophilia, but could pass this on to her son. So the son of, an, of a carrier female, so this is the female on the top, and then the male on the side, he would be X big H, X sorry, X big H, Y. And the chance of him having um, haemophilia is actually 50-50. And the reason why it's 50-50 is that you can only look at these ones at the bottom. So these ones in green at the bottom, you can only look at those because those are the only ones that are male. These ones here are gonna, all gonna be female because they're XX. So in this case, you've got two options and there's a one-to-one -one chance. There's a few other things you can talk about there, but these are the most of the easy marks. Now let's mark these all together now. So we get one mark for stating that what the six chromosomes are, as well as, well as they're inherited from each parent. Um, probably not nothing for this, but you also get one for saying XX is female, and another mark for saying XY is male. And finally, another mark for saying um, that the gender is determined by the father. So already that's five points, and we haven't even touched on haemophilia. So we can also say that uh, for haemophilia, uh, we talked about a sex-linked gene as well as haemophilia as an example, and then it's more likely for a male to be affected, and an affected female will have um, will have this particular genotype, so X H little H X little H, and a carrier female will be this. So if we count those all up, there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there are ten marks within there, um, and we'll easily get the required eight marks to get four marks. There are plenty more YouTube videos for you to check out, just click on the links below. If you'd like to download the questions, as well as the answers, make sure to like us on Facebook first. And finally, if you'd like to find out how I got a 7 in high-level IB biology, make sure to check out our website in the bottom right-hand corner. Thanks.